And there's a lot going on in the league right now. But let's start off with the number one topic, um, Damian Lillard, because he finally did it. Loyalty card has finally ran out. He wants out of Portland. What are your thoughts on Damian Lillard asking out and his top destination being Miami? So my first thoughts are like, man, this took too long, right? Like both sides knew that this needed to happen a couple years ago. And I mean that in multiple ways, right? Like for Portland, they just needed to hit the reset button on this. From the time they traded CJ McCollum, understood it was going to work in the backcourt with two small guards, it was time for them to move on. And for Dane, it was also time for him to move on and try to go to a place where he could actually win because it was not going to happen on Portland. We all knew this for some time. As far as him wanting to go to Miami, look, it would be a good fit for him in Miami. You know, if you could pair him with Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, I think that would be a good fit. I think what's interesting here is the hang-up on both sides. Mm. Miami doesn't want to give up everything. They don't want to do it. They're talking about leading with a package with Tyler Hero. Portland, they don't want to get fleeced here. I think they want to do right by Dame, and I understand that from both sides, but they also need to do what's best for them in the long term so they can actually have a good rebuild. And it's funny because Brooklyn was the other team that was mentioned in terms of that he might be interested in, although Miami's a top destination, we've heard that. Brooklyn actually has more assets to give uh, Portland than Miami does, and I think it's going to be a game of hardball. Dame really wants Miami. Miami definitely wants him. You see the Heat fans on Twitter mm-hmm. complaining, crying if they don't get him. It's, it's sad. But <laughs> this, this – yeah, I've, I've seen it. And you see Portland fans being mad that Dame wants out. It's a lot of angry people – yeah, Twitter. I don't that's get that. A whole nother, that's a whole nother thing, right? I don't understand that either, Alex. But I think that you've got to, you know, there's going to be some hardball here. You're going to see that. You've seen all these leaks about Miami asked for the medicals and Portland wants this and what's that. Portland, And here's the thing. You can't be mad at Portland. Portland has to play hardball here. Yes. If he's going to go to Miami, they got to make sure that they get the most that they want out of rebuild. And that's just business. That's just business in the NBA. I think it ultimately ends with Dame going to Miami, but I think Miami's going to have to pay a price as they should. And I think Portland's going to try to get the most that they can out of them in terms of young players on tradable contracts. Cause Miami just doesn't have the draft assets that Brooklyn does. So I think they're going to try to get as many players or tradable contracts that they can out of them to make this work. Yeah, I agree with you, Dexter. I mean, look, Portland needs to do what they, as you said, they need to do what's best for them as an organization moving forward. You got Scoot Henderson over there. You got, uh, Anthony Simons, right? You got shade on sharp. Uh, so you want to make sure that they're, they want, they should want to make sure they're building in a nice young core to move forward for this future. And they don't want to just get no draft capital in return because look, just from when they hired Mike Schmitz of ESPN, right? Draft analyst. It only, it was screaming that they wanted to move in that direction. It was just, when was Dame ready to just move on, go to the next phase of his career, go out and compete for a title. So now here we are, but for Portland, you know, there's also other teams that are out there. You know, there's, there's talks about Philly. There's talks about San Antonio. You mentioned Brooklyn. Do you expect, would you expect the jazz or Philly to be in that time in that running for Damian Lord? Or do you really think that it's just down between Miami and Brooklyn? Because that's, that's what he talked about on a podcast recently. Right. So where, where do you expect that? So what I expect is look, I think it really does become between what he wants, right, with Miami and Brooklyn. But Portman would be stupid to not do their due diligence and talk to these other teams and feel these calls from other teams that are probably calling and say, hey, what's up? Can we get in with – can we get in with them? Can we, do, can we do this? And listen, if they get a better offer from a team like the Sixers, who obviously there's a tradable piece with Harden, and maybe you get a three-way deal, and they're looking for somebody to replace Harden, and it's the best deal for Portland, they got to do what's best for Portland. Um, I think too far in this relationship, and this is what I was alluding to before, is that neither side, I don't think they've been afraid or Dane was afraid to leave Portland. I just think nobody wanted to do wrong by the other side, and I still think they're trying to do right by each side. And I think at some point, this has to be understood that this is business. Dane wants to do what's best for him, which I support. Mm -hmm. Uh, Portland also has to want to do what's best for them, which I also support. And so, yes, I I don't think there's smoke to some of the stuff you've heard about Utah trying to get in or or San Antonio. San Antonio, while I see what they're trying to do there, I don't think it makes sense because Dame doesn't fit their timeline. Mm -hmm. But if you put him next to Big Vic, 
uh, and everybody thinks Wembenyama is what they think he is, then yes, maybe that could work, but it doesn't really fit the timeline. Utah is interesting. Minnesota, we, we've heard about, but they now have three max players, so that'll be interesting. We'll get into that later. Um, Portland has to talk to other teams, and they got to let Miami know, and that might be this may be part of the hardball that I'm talking about, that, hey, you're not the only destination here. We're going to do what's best for us, and that might get Miami to come up off of a little bit more of something that they have. So this is the NBA. You're going to see a lot. This is a time when there's a lot of lies, Alex. Yes. You're going to hear a lot of people. Yes. A lot of people sending smoke information here. Agents are working and leaking this and that. So believe half of what you see in here and all that stuff. But there's going to be some of that to raise the price on what is actually going to be a deal. And it's all gamesmanship. It's all part of the game, man. So uh, I, I do, but I do think Portland wouldn't be unwise to not talk to other teams, to not talk to the Utahs and the Minnesotas and the San Antonios to see what they can get there. They need to know if you're going to make a trade, right? You want to know what the market is and what other teams are willing to give up. So if you know that, then you can go back to Miami and say, hey, we can get a better deal here and see what they're willing to give up. So it's one big game of chicken. Uh, and we'll see who uh, blinks first, man. Like, we'll see. But I, Portland's got to talk to other teams. They have to. They got to. For sure, for sure. But do you think, because, you know, we also talk about, you know, Portland want to do right by Dame. Do you think Dame was right to then say, I want to leave after Portland just extended Jeremy Grant to a five-year, $160 million deal? Do you think that was right? Because I see some conversation amongst NBA Twitter saying how, like, Where's the loyalty in that saying, well, you just extended Grant for this uh, this enormous contract for his position, mm-hmm. for his role. Is that really fair to, to Portland? What, what are your thoughts about that? So, okay, so here's my thing with the Jeremy Grant situation. I don't I don't think it I didn't think it made sense for the Trailblazers to sign Grant to that number anyway whether Dame was going to leave or not, right? Like, I, like that's just kind of where I am. Like, it's not it's not that I don't like Jeremy Grant as a player. I do, actually. I just think at that number, the five years um, and the length of the contract, I guess it's more of that, the length of the contract that they signed him to, that's it. So I felt like that wasn't a move because, the th- and this is where it goes to your point that you made about once they hired Mike Smith. What direction were you going in? Portland, what were you doing? I put that more in the organization than I do Dame, to be honest, right? What was the direction they're going to? We know Dame had the meeting last week with Portland, sat down with Joe Cronin, and they, they supposedly talked. I got to think they talked about what direction they were going in, and they probably had to tell him, look, we're bringing back Jeremy Grant. And they did. So I don't blame, I don't put the blame on Dame in this whatsoever. It sounded like they were going to bring back Jeremy Grant no matter what it was going to be, which again, I don't think for those years was the right move, whether you were rebuilding or you were staying with Dame. I don't think it made sense. Mm-hmm. It really just didn't make sense at all whatsoever. But once they did it and Dame asked out, you know, it is what it is because I got to think that even if they told Dame that they probably, Dame had to ask, I'm just, I'm assuming here, I don't know any inside information on this. Dame had to ask, well, what's your plan beyond this? And it sounds to me like Portland's like, oh, we're going to have it with you and the young guys. Dame already said he didn't want to play with these young guys and be part of this rebuilding, especially with a, with a Jeremy Grant. So that wasn't going to work. I'm not mad at Dame for asking out. Like, And for the people who are mad at the players asking out, man, other situations, I know he's a superstar player, but teams will trade you at any time for what they want. They're going to do what's best for them. So can't be mad at Dame doing what's best for him. Like, it is what it is. And again, put this on the Blazers. Sounds like they were going to bring Jeremy Grant back regardless, again, which I don't think was a good move. Why are we criticizing Dame, but we're not criticizing the Blazers for not having a solid and concrete rebuilding plan? Excellent points, Dexter. And and I agree. When you say, like you mentioned, Trailblazers wanted to bring back Jeremy Grant. And even when, like, the number is just so massive to me that it doesn't make sense. I don't mind bringing the player back because I think you need good players. You need veteran experience for such a young team. And just to have good players also helps the development process of young players as well. Right. You need someone who's able to contribute on the floor. I get that whole aspect, but to pay him like on an average of 30 million a year, I don't know where in the whole NBA world that you're going to say, Jeremy Grant, 30 million a year. That's what we need to add to a team right now. And this is not disrespecting him as a player. This is not dis- disrespecting like his his abilities. But if you're thinking about a team that's going to trade for somebody, if you're thinking about moving off of him at some point, 
I haven't seen enough of Jeremy Grant as that guy to uh, to demand thirty million a year, right? Because let's just even look at around other players around the league, right? You look at Jalen Brunson, who's on uh, a good contract. You look at what uh, who, who's another good player. You look at what even Paul George is making at forty something, right? Like you, I'm thinking like in between there, like is he is Grant better than what Brunson gives? No, and is he anywhere what Paul George can be at, at his peak? No, and it's like. So why is 30 million like the the number that you have to give them? I think that's the the bigger of the hang up. That's the big hang up. And I'm I'm all for players getting their money, but if you're just yeah. thinking from a team building standpoint of what you got to do moving forward and just thinking is this contract flippable? That's my biggest question mark. So here's the thing for Portland, right? Like to me about what has to happen for them moving forward what, or what they had to hope for. Now that they're, I know it's not official until Thursday, but if they're going to commit to Jeremy Grant, you got to hope that that contract could not be as bad in two to three years, depending on what happens with the cap and how much it goes up. Mm -hmm. Let's say the cap ends up in three years. Let's say it's somewhere around 190 to 195 million dollars, right? Now he his percentage of what he is in the cap for your team is not as big as it was, and then he becomes a little bit more tradable. But there's a lot of ifs there. There are projections that in four to five years, the cap could be over $205 million to $210 million. That's possible. And then it doesn't look so bad. But the key is in what you're talking about, Alex, is what happens in those three to four years that we're talking about, right? Like what flexibility do you have with your team and what are you paying him as? We saw Jeremy Grant as a number one option on a bad Detroit Pistons team. And he put up some numbers because somebody has to on a bad team. Yep. But he's not that dude. Jeremy Grant's probably best suited as a third best player on a really good team. And that's fine. Again, I don't think we're giving any shade to Jeremy Grant. We want to see the players get their money, all that. But from a team building's perspective, if you're Portland, you got to hope now that you have the flexibility to trade him and he'll still will have value. Or is he going to sort of get further exposed and say, oh, that's a lot of money for what he brings to the table. And in the next two years, you're not able to really move off of that deal. That's the thing. I think four to five years down the road, you probably will. Ideally, in four, if the cap goes up a significant amount, but yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't like it, and also he doesn't fit the timeline of the mm -hmm. rest of your young guys. That that's actually the really biggest thing to me. He doesn't fit the timeline for the rest of your young guys. So, yeah, maybe there's a sign and trade involved that we don't we don't know about yet, or something like that. But cap space is running out for them to do that. So from other teams, so it'll be interesting.